Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all safe and healthy. So today I'm back at the one of one showroom to take a look at the brand new 2022 Bentley Flying Spur. And in this video, I'll let you know everything about the car that you need to know. And also in the end, I'll let you know my verdict on uh, uh, the car and if it is a good buy or not for you. So do stay tuned till the end. Before we go ahead and take a look at the car, I just wanted to give a big thanks to one of one uh, for allowing me to come here and uh, make the videos. So to show my appreciation, I want you guys, the viewers, to go ahead and follow them on Instagram. The link will be in the description below. And on the latest post, do let them know that you are there by after watching my videos so that in the future, I'll get access to more cars for you guys. And also, if you're watching this video from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, I'll be leaving a location link for the one of one showroom right in the description below. So if you are someone who is looking to buy a new premium car, so do come to the showroom over here. And uh, if you're new to the channel, guys, do leave a like and do subscribe to the channel as well. And do turn on the notifications so that you'll be the first ones to know when I upload later videos. And now let's take a look at the car. All right, guys. So here it is, the 2022 Bentley Flying Spur. This particular model is the W12. And uh, for the 22 model year, uh, Bentley have only added the new hybrid model. And other than that, they have not done any other changes externally or internally. Uh, so it's the same. And now with the addition of the hybrid model, you have uh, three flying spurs. So you get the hybrid, you have the V8, and then you have the W12 uh, like this one. And uh, all the three models get their own specific Mulliner edition as well. I'll just put up what uh, Mulliner specification means so that it's you, you can just pause it and read it. But it's uh, better than me explaining it because even I'm not that uh, sure of what it means. So I'll just uh, take the definition out and I'll just put it for you guys over here. But now let's talk about the car itself. So like I told you, externally there is no changes in the design. It looks the same as the previous or 2021 model year. and. Uh, I think the Bentley Flying Spur is a smart looking model and out of its competitors which include the Mercedes S-Class then you have the Rolls Royce Ghost as well. Uh, I think the Bentley has a unique uh, look to it and even the Rolls Royce has a unique look. Only the Maybach S-Class has a look that's, uh, that resembles the standard S-Class. Uh, other than that the Bentley and the Rolls Royce have their own unique personality and that shows over here. Uh, the only defining feature of the Bentley that you have is the quad headlights. So two on each side. You have this one over here and this over here as well. So this is how the front fascia looks. I'll just try to show it to you as best as possible because there is a beam here so I do not have a lot of space. Let's take a closer look at the headlights. And I think Bentley makes one of the best looking headlights in the business uh, just because of that internal structure which looks like the crystal. And uh, all of the Bentleys have that. So uh, no matter what Bentley you get, you're getting that crystal effect headlight which looks really nice. Then let's take a look at the grille. So this particular model has these extra chrome inserts uh, as standard they, they are blacked out but uh, this one has the extra chrome option that's why you have this extra chrome here and you also have this extra chrome right over here as well that you can see as standard all these uh, mesh parts are blacked out but you can make them uh, chrome if you want but uh, the opposite is true as well if you don't like chrome you can just black it out but uh, i think for the w12 model uh, having the chrome does suit the car's vibe or the car's character uh, much better because it feels more like a luxury car rather than a sporty vehicle. I think the blacked out package looks better on the Flying Spur V8, not on the W12. Then we have the Flying B, which is illuminated. I'll just put up a clip of how uh, the illumination looks. And uh, if you fiddle with it, it will go inside, uh, but I'll not pull on it very hard. Then I forgot to show you, you have your uh, camera here for your 360 degree as well. Then coming up to the hood, you can see we have a chrome strip that's running down the middle. Now let's move on to the side and while moving on the side currently i do not know the price of this uh, particular vehicle after i know it i'll just put down below for you guys okay so now moving on to the side you can see we have a much sportier side design or side profile compared to something like the s-class or the rolls royce uh, that just shows you the intentions of the bentley flying spur and i think this is the most uh, i think the bentley flying spur is the sportiest out of uh, all its competitors and the competitors are the rolls royce ghost and the maybach s-class as well and now let's take a look at some of the features on the side so you can see we have a chrome surround on the window trim you can black it out obviously but uh, this one i think it just looks a lot better 
Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the paint as well. So this one, I think uh, is uh, it's obviously black. It's a metallic black finish. Uh, I tried hard to show it in the camera, but it doesn't show up the metallic flakes, but it does have them. And being a Bentley, you have a lot of choices for paints. Uh, I personally would not go for black. I would go for something a bit more colorful that suits the sporty characteristics of the Bentley Flying Spur, but uh, everyone has their own choice. Then you can see we have this Flying Bee design on the side, which I think is fake wind yeah it is a fake wind which i think is a bit unnecessary but it would have looked a lot better to me if that was not there and it had a nice clean design but bentley decided to put it over there maybe some people like it but i'm not a personal fan of it because it serves no function then let's take a look at the wheels so these are the 22 inch Mulliner uh, polished wheels. You can get them with black inserts or gray inserts as well. And you do have a lot of other choices as well in the rims. Uh, this particular uh, rim is sitting on a 275 section tire with a 35 series sidewall and the 22 inch rim. And it does look pretty good, but I would personally go for something of a darker choice. Uh, the polished rim is not uh, my cup of tea. Then you can see the huge brake calipers at the back. I think these are 10 piston calipers because the calipers take half of the size over here. So they are pretty huge with the performance that this thing has you have to have good braking uh, capabilities as well then again moving down the side you have your w12 badge here uh, which will be different according to the model if you have a v8 it will be v8 or if you have a hybrid the hybrid will be written over there then you have a chrome strip that runs along the bottom over there then here you can see we have some nice sized uh, side mirrors and with your indicators inside and you do have blind spot um, cameras as well now moving on to the rear wheel and it is obviously larger than the front so it's a 315 section tire with a 30 series sidewall and again the 22 inch rim and again you do have pretty large disc brakes at the back as well one design feature that i do love in bentley's is this muscular rear haunches it makes the car look a lot muscular and sporty as well and i think it's present on all the bentley models and it's kind of like their design feature and it is one of my favorites so now let's move on to the rear Okay, so before we move on to the rear, I just wanted to talk about the suspension side of things and uh, the Bentley Flying Spur comes a standard on air suspension and it has three chamber air springs as well and you obviously have the modes in it, a comfort sport with the Bentley mode as well. So as expected from a Bentley, the ride quality will be really nice. And now let's take a look at the rear. So the rear design of the Bentley does look really nice and sporty and you can see the tail lights do have that B logo uh, inside them which looks really nice when it's lit up. Then you have Bentley written right in the middle with your Bentley uh, logo as well, or the Flying B. Uh, other than that, there is nothing else on the uh, Flying Spur that says it is a Flying Spur. Uh, you obviously have to know it, but uh, that's it. Then uh, down below, you can see we have huge oval exhausts as well. Uh, these ones, uh, if you get the V8, you have uh, two smaller uh, oval exhausts on each side. Uh, since this is the W12, you have one huge uh, oval exhaust which is real by the way unlike mercedes which puts uh, fake exhaust then down below we can see i think this is the reverse light right over here and you don't have any fake diffuser design uh, you just have a plain design over here uh, but there is a styling package which you can get on the bentley flying spur which gives you a fake diffuser as well and you do have a sort of uh, body kit because it gives you a sportier front lip you have uh, more pronounced side skirts and you also have that uh, diffuser that i mentioned off and you also get a small uh, lip spoiler uh, over here as well so that was all on the exterior and now let's take a look at the boot space okay so to open the boot on the bentley flying spur you have uh, three ways you have the key fob then you have a button on the interior or you can just press the b over here and it electrically opens up so uh, when you have a bentley you don't need uh, manual operating trunk spaces even if it's a sedan let's talk about the space so you have 420 liters of space or 14.8 cubic feet which is pretty less when compared to something like the maybach s-class and even the rolls royce ghost so it falls short in terms of boot space compared to its rivals but it is a decent usable size and you do have a 12 volt socket here you can see it comes out like that then you do have some tethering points then this particular model has the spare tire inside you do have underflow storage as well but i won't pick it up because the tire is currently sitting on it it might break 
and also the carpet inside is really nice and soft so the whole thing is uh, carpeted and it's really nice and soft carpet then here you can see there are some aluminum protectors as well for if you have something heavy and if you drag it out it won't damage your paint so that's there for that and you can obviously close your boot electrically as well so that was the boot space and now let's take a look at the engine bay all right guys so this is the engine bay of the bentley flying spur and like i told you this one has the 6 liter w12 engine w12 is basically two v6s joined together so it is a pretty complicated engine and the engine detailing is pretty nice and you can just take a look at this oil cap over here which looks really good as well uh, so let me tell you some specs about it so this engine is obviously twin turbocharged and it produces 626 horsepower and 664 pound feet of torque which is like 900 newton meters of torque and it is attached to an eight speed dual clutch transmission which is similar to the one in the Porsche Panamera because uh, the platform on which the Bentley Flying Spur rides on is also very similar to the Porsche Panamera as well and all this is attached to an all-wheel drive system which uh, pushes this car which weighs around 2437 kilos which is pretty heavy from 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds and you have a top speed of 333 kilometers per hour or 207 miles per hour which i think makes the bentley flying spur w12 one of the fastest four-door sedans in the world uh, i think the charger hellcat is somewhere like 205 miles per hour but uh, the bentley flying spur is properly quick so that is all there is to say about the engine and its performance and uh, obviously the driving characteristics is uh, pretty nice of the Bentley from what I've read about it. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot drive it because it is kept inside the showroom and it is meant to be a car for the customer, not a test drive vehicle. And now let's take a look at the interior. to the interior i just wanted to say that if you're enjoying the video so far do leave a like and do subscribe to the channel as well and do turn on your notifications so that you'll be the first ones to know when i upload later videos and now let's take a look at the interior okay so before heading to the interior i just wanted to show you the fuel efficiency so six liter w12 all-wheel drive and uh, with the performance this thing has you can't expect a good fuel economy as well and as you can see it shows very poor uh, so it is 8.7 kilometers per liter i'll convert it into mpg for you guys and it is pretty, pretty poor so now let's take a look at the interior and you obviously have uh, keyless go and entry and you also have soft closed door which i'll just show it to you there we go and now let's take a look at the door trim first you can also see we have the flying b logo projected on the ground as well which looks really nice and let's take a look at the door trim so this particular model has a magnolia interior and it has a split interior as well so you have the magnolia colored seats and you have a black colored uh, dashboard or the top of the dashboard is in black and uh, obviously being a bentley you have a lot of other configurations as well you can split the color in, in many ways in many different ways uh, but this one has this uh, pattern uh, you can do whatever you want and make it truly one of one so now let's take a look at the door trim so the materials as expected from a bentley is nice and soft it's leather everywhere so you don't have to worry about the plastics but uh, this particular part over here is nice and soft and then the stitching over here you can see how the contrast stitching works you have uh, the magnolia stitching for the black and you have the black stitching for the, the magnolia leather over here then you have this wood trim uh, this particular wood trim is open pore koa wood through some of the research i did koa wood is uh, something that you find in hawaii i think so uh, so they have sourced this wood from there and it has an open pore finish which i really like then you can see the ambient lighting uh, which goes all around over here right now i don't think it shows up pretty well but uh, when i sit inside and turn on the car it will show up so i'll just sh i'll show it to you later on then you have this more black leather right over here and then you have this design detail in magnolia leather which looks really nice i don't know how they did it but it's really nice uh, you have a more strong design over here and as it goes towards the door handle it fades out which i think is a really nice touch then you have some really high quality door handles as well you have your central locking then down at the armrest this part is also really nice and soft uh, you have your child locks your uh, window switches and your side mirror controls as well then you have a nice chunky door handle over here then down below again this part is covered in nice and soft uh, material and i think this is leather 
uh, it cannot be anything other than that then you have your memory seating your button to open your tailgate and you have a pretty small amount of door storage as well so this is the standard bentley speaker you have two other options a bang and olufsen or a name for bentley audio as well if you are an audiophile and you really like to listen to music i think you should uh, upgrade to the um, bang and olufsen or the name audio they are more expensive but uh, for someone buying a bentley i don't think that's an issue then moving on over here you can see we have the bentley sill plates which is illuminated as well and you have this uh, badge over here as well handcrafted by bentley motors limited crew england then these are the seats you can see we have the bentley logo embroidered over there which looks really nice and you have the diamond quilting on the seats the seats itself are really nice and soft you have uh, perforations in it because it is heated and ventilated as well then down below you have your adjustments for your seat and you can take a look at how many adjustments there are even i don't know half of what these things do so maybe you guys know do let me know in the comments below and now let's take a seat inside and we'll take a look at the interior okay so i'm in the interior of the bentley flying spur and uh, these seats i think are one of the most comfortable seats that i've uh, sat in before this the most comfortable seats that uh, i had taken a seat in was the uh, maybach s class but uh, these seats are even better than the Maybach seats and they are pretty nice and comfortable and uh, if the front seats are so nice I think um, I do want to check out how the rear seats are as well but first let's take a look at the interior at the front uh, so like I told you the ambient lighting uh, is right over here and currently I have set it to the blue color and you can see it is nice small thin strip which goes around the dashboard and goes over there as well you do have some more ambient lighting on the center console as well uh, the ambient lighting though is not as good as the maybach s class but the overall quality of the interior i think is slightly better than the maybach s class as well uh, i can easily compare both of them because i have uh, reviewed the s class as well or the maybach s class as well that particular model also had a v12 and this also has a w12 so it's a nice apples to apples comparison and uh, let me just uh, take you through through the uh, dashboard quality so you have nice and soft leather up top again with that contrast stitching which looks really nice uh, you do have a heads up display i'll just try to show you as best as i can i hope you just see it right over there so that's the heads up display you get it as standard i think so then you have that uh, open pour core wood which i told you and it goes all the way around the cabin and being open pour i really like it because you can feel the texture of the wood on your fingers i'm not a fan of the gloss wood textures because uh, they look uh, pretty uh, plasticky to me but uh, this design looks really good then let's talk about some of the features over here so here you have your light controls then you have your i think this is a 12.3 inch display and this is also another 12.3 inch display for your infotainment but uh, let's talk about some of the things on the steering wheel before we talk about the displays so behind the steering wheel you have your controls for, for your indicators and lane assistance systems and uh, the knurling on this part over here feels really nice and high quality and i think um, people who drive uh, the bentley's uh, will be really pleased to touch this part over here it just feels really nice and cold to the touch because it is metal then you have that same style right over here as well for your windshield controls and again it's cold to the touch being metal and down below you have your cruise control settings again with that same knurling design and now i think i'm a fan of this bentley flying spur just because of the attention to details in the interior uh, you do have an electrically operated steering wheel as well the button is uh, right down below then here you can see we have some paddle shifters as well which are again full uh, which are again made out of metal and they do have a slight knurling at the back as well i'll just try to show you as best as i can uh, i hope you can just see it and again they're cold to the touch then let's come to the steering wheel itself so it's a nice round steering wheel you don't have any flat bottom on it and uh, this particular one is in two tone so you have the black leather on top with your uh, magnolia leather in the in on the interior of it or on the inside and you have your contrast stretching all around and the steering wheel itself feels pretty nice to hold then you have your flying b right here and for those who are familiar with the porsche systems or audi systems this is very similar to the button layout but uh, the quality of the buttons are a lot better than the porsche and audi you can just take a look at this over here the scroll wheel you can, it has knurling on it uh, this part over here as well but now let's uh, take a look at the digital driver's display right over here so currently it's set to uh, this uh, car display right now and you can cycle through it using this scroll wheel over here so currently it's showing your date and time then you can go through your 
uh, trip computer then you have your long term trips and then you have your driver assistance but uh, if you press this part you can change it to different things as well you can take a chronograph then you can go to a reduced display you can change the layout as well for the tachometer or speedometer you can just swap them if you want uh, then then pressing this button takes you to the next display which is i think all the safety systems or warnings then here you have a night vision cur camera currently is just reflecting off the uh, mirror or the glass over there so that's why it's showing its own display over there then you can go through your fm and stuff and you can again change over there for am and fm then you have your phone connection i think it has android auto or apple carplay i'm not sure though we'll check out later on and this is your uh, map and then here's your navigation and if you want you can just press this view button right over here and the speedometer moves out of the way and you get a larger map display but uh, that's all the functions in the digital driver's display and now let's move on to the main uh, display right over here uh, i think this is a 12.3 inch display as well so the main uh, party trick of this uh, display is the screen button over here so if you press that you can see it switches off and then you get these dials over here so this is an outside air dial then you have uh, our compass over here and this is your i think stopwatch uh, you can just take a look at the details over here which look really nice so that's how this thing looks then this is your compass and this is your stopwatch Overall, all of these look really nice and high quality. Then if you hold the screen button, it will go to this part over here, which gives you a nice uh, smooth finish all around. So this is the part that comes up when you switch off the car. You don't get any of the dials or the screen and stuff. You just get a nice clean wood design, which is really nice. And then you can press the screen button again and you have your screen presented to you. In the screen itself, I think the software is similar to the ones uh, on the older generation of the Audis. I think it's this is not the latest system uh, on which you get on the Porsche as well. Uh, this was the previous gen uh, Porsche system. I think so. I'm not sure though. So you can see we have some uh, tiles over here. This particular tile show you, uh, shows you what current uh, drive mode you are in. And then your ambient lighting. You have all your different colors here. You have your brightness for your ambient lighting, your tire pressure, your date and time, and your massaging seats. And it has a lot of it has a lot of massages for you guys. Then here you have your map. Then you have your other stuff as well. Uh, and you can obviously uh, pick and choose whatever you want on the screen. But otherwise, you can just go through their own dedicated parts as well. So navigation, you get a nice white screen display over here. Then you have your media for your radio and stuff. Then you have your phone. Then you have your car settings. So in this, it currently, in this, it's currently showing you the drive dynamics, and you can change your drive modes from here. So currently, it's in the Bentley mode. You can go into sport mode. Uh, you can go into the comfort mode, or you can go into a custom mode as well. We'll keep it in the Bentley mode for now. Then you have your flying B, uh, which you can uh, close and reveal from here if you want. You can do that from here as well. You can conceal it and stuff. Then here you have a tire pressure monitoring and you do have some system settings as well for your climate control, mood lighting, all that stuff. Then you have dedicated climate control as well, which you can turn off and on. Uh, then you can control the rear climate control as well. Then you have your apps. Uh, you have your sound settings. You can like the equalizer and stuff. And then you have your basic settings and stuff where you can set up all the vehicle functions, the display settings and all the stuff you can do over here. Then moving down to the bottom, you have your shortcut buttons for your main display as well. So here you have your screen, phone, navigation, your back and home button as well. Uh, you have your volume knobs as well. And all of them have that knurling on them, which look really nice. Then coming down, we have your uh, air vents, which have a really nice uh, design. And you have your watch in the middle. I think this is a Breitling watch or this is a standard a standard Bentley watch. I'm not sure. I think the Breitling watch is an option. Then you have your organ stops here and you have a wireless charger down at the bottom as well. And I think that at the back is a cigarette lighter as well. And then coming to the center console, here you have your uh, gear selector for your 8-speed dual clutch. Here you have your climate control settings. You have your seat, hand, uh, seat ventilation, seat heating, your sink. Then you have your electronic parking brake. You have your traction control system, hazards. Uh, auto start stop your parking sensors and stuff and this is your camera system so if you press that the camera turns on and you have your full 360 degree parking camera here as well so currently showing a panorama front then you have a panorama rear view then you have a side view then you have your rear view and here's your 
front view as well and if you want you can clean it as well okay then these buttons are to control the blinds this controls the blind at the at the rear window and then this button controls all the blinds in the car so you can see when i pull on it the sunroof closes the blinds on the rear windows closes and if you press and if you pull this you can see that also closes as well or currently i just opened it up but uh, if you want full privacy you can do that then here you have some storage if you press that you have your cup holders this particular one has an ash ashtray but the ashtray is also nice and high quality it is made out of metal then here you have your armrest which is nice and soft and for some reason i don't know why it just extends all the way to the front as you can see but for some reason it doesn't open up i don't know why uh, but um, maybe it doesn't open up or it's the only function it has is this but uh, if it doesn't open up then a lot of the storage space that could be below this is not accessible that's your glove box lined with felt and you have a nice and okay amount of space you do have some sd card and sim slots as well then moving on over here you can see we have this frameless uh, rear view mirror which looks really nice and you do have your controls for your sunroof right over here up top uh, if you want you can turn on your lights they are touch sensitive and leds as well then here you have your vanity mirrors which have an led light up top and your mirrors are over here now let's talk about the space in this car and you can see i have a good amount of headroom despite wearing this cap and in these seats i'm pretty comfortable as well uh, i'm a touch on the larger side and my height is six feet four or 195 centimeters so you can get a good idea of the height if uh, you were sitting in my place and these seats are pretty nice and comfortable i told you already at the start of the interior video overall the visibility is uh, pretty nice uh, the only thing is that these uh, a pillars are pretty thick so you have a kind of a blind spot only on this side but other than that the view outside is pretty good and now let's jump in the back seats and take a look over there okay so now let's take a look at the back seats and before we go head inside i just wanted to show you the door trim over here so the door trim is similar to the front and you have nice soft touch materials here or basically you have soft touch leather uh, with your contrast stitching and your led lighting as well uh, this one has this uh, design element right over here with the magnolia leather uh, but if you want you can get that wood trim over here as well then you have uh, more uh, leather over here with your chunky door handle here you have your window switches your memory seating controls and your seat controls here as well so you can see it moves the seats accordingly over there and then you have your speaker right over here and some door storage space as well uh, even the rear uh, doors have this puddle light right at the bottom with your flying b which i think is a really nice attention to detail then on the side you have your bentley logo uh, which is illuminated in the ambient color that i have set so since i have set the ambient color to blue uh, that bentley logo is lit up in blue as well and you have your plaque for handcraft handcrafted by bentley over here so now let's jump inside and take a look at the features over there okay so now i'm in the back seats of the bentley um, flying spur and again i have to say this i'm pretty comfortable and i don't feel like getting out from here uh, these pillows on the seats are pretty nice and soft uh, the comfort levels are pretty nice and i think these seats are even com more comfortable than the maybach s classes seats uh, at the rear which i thought were pretty nice and comfortable as well uh, so these are even better than that uh, one thing though that kind of um, bothers me is the space inside so i do not have a lot of leg room as compared to what i had in the maybach s class i had a lot of leg room in the maybach and even the headroom is uh, less in this uh, so let me just show it to you so as you can see my head is all the cap is almost touching this uh, uh, sunroof right over here but uh, if i remove the cap i do have an okay amount of headroom but this is not as much as uh, in the maybach s class in the maybach s class the cabin felt a lot lighter due to the larger windows and uh, there was a lot more light coming inside the cabin this does feel a bit more uh, cramped or claustrophobic even though i'm not cramped in it basically you do have a feeling of being cramped because uh, the wind the roof line is much closer to your head the windows are a bit smaller when compared to the maybach s class so that is one point i would give to the maybach so it is better over there but in terms of the comfort quality i think the bentley is a lot better than the maybach s class in this department so let's take a look at some of the features around the rear cabin so some of the features if you want you can get picnic tables in that same open pore coa wood that is over there as well uh, if you want it then here you have your uh, armrest which is obviously foldable 
uh, if you want you can get a full length armrest as well which covers this whole part uh, but this one has this foldable one uh, which you can see has this nice uh, metal inlays in it then this part of the armrest is pretty nice and soft you do have some storage right over there so you can see you do have some usb ports these are the old fashioned usb ports not usb c's so you have usb a's uh, then the storage space is also a decent size then at the back uh, you do have through loading this one does not have the fridge option but you can get that then you do have the screen right over there if you want you can just press this button right over there and the screen comes out for you to take it out and you do have a lot of functions in it so let me just try to show it to you so you have media controls climate controls seat controls you can control your blind you can control your navigation lighting flying uh, car stuff sound and other state settings as well which i think is really nice and this thing is pretty nice and hefty as well you can see you have some metal knurling here as well then let's just keep this back inside then you have your climate controls here with your organ stops and you have some storage over here then here you do have some uh, storage space here but it is pretty tight so i don't know what you'll keep inside then here you have your coat hook uh, you do have some more air vents here and here you have the controls for your uh, seats so you can uh, if you want you can control the front seats as well and move them out of the way so this is your lumbar adjustment then you have your seat height adjustment so you can recline and stuff and you have your memory seating as well then here you have some more light controls which are led by the way then you have your controls for your sunroof right over here and um, i think that's all there is to show in the bentley flying spur so guys that was the video on the bentley flying spur i hope you enjoyed it a lot and uh, what do i think about the flying spur it has its disadvantages in terms of the space in the cabin but uh, other than that it is an overall excellent car i think it edges out the Maybach S-Class in my favorite cars as well uh, just because of the interior features the attention to detail which was my favorite feature of the Bentley and on the performance side of things it is better than the Maybach S-Class as well it is one of the fastest sedans in the world so it has that going for it uh, I have not reviewed a Bent uh, I have not reviewed a Rolls-Royce Ghost yet so maybe uh, when I review that that might become a new favorite but for now I think the Bentley Flying Spur is really nice uh, and what model I think you should go for I think the W12 is the one you should go for because it's a Bentley after all and the W12 just suits it a lot better it is a much smoother engine as well and if you're someone who thinks about the fuel cost and stuff then you do have the hybrid option as well so that was all I had to say and if you enjoyed the video guys do leave a like and do subscribe to the channel as well and do turn on your notifications so that that you'll be the first ones to know when I upload later videos. So thanks for watching guys. Stay safe, stay healthy and bye-bye.